Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. BlackRock warns of recession like no other and says what worked before won't work now. Many people were hoping for a Santa Claus rally this Christmas, but unfortunately we've got some new bad economic data to say that we're not out of the woods yet. So everyone, exactly why will this recession be worse than others and why won't what they did before to get us out of this recession work now? Well, that's exactly what we're going to get into in today's video. So let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Well, holy smokes, everyone, look at this. BlackRock, prepare for recession unlike any other, and what worked before won't work now. The world's largest investment manager has gone all in and says a global recession is right around the corner. What's more, the financial tricks deployed by central banks in past won't work this time. So that's exactly right, everyone. What I've been warning about is I've been saying this recession is going to be longer and it's going to be deeper and they're not going to be able to save us like they could in 2008 in the year 2000 because back then inflation was so low so they were able to print money like crazy or should I say the CPI was low but now with the CPI uh, at record levels, 40-year highs, they can't just print money and drop interest rates like they could in the past. So when the recession hits, we had the market still in delusion uh, that the Federal Reserve will pivot, save the day. Well, they're not going to be able to do this, ladies and gentlemen. According to BlackRock, the global economy has entered a phase of elevated volatility and that a recession is imminent due to central bankers uh, aggressively boosting borrowing costs to tame inflation. Their actions, according to a team of BlackRock strategists, will ignite more market turbulence than ever before. While they're right there as well, this is one of the most aggressive rate hike cycles in history. What's different today is it's not just the Federal Reserve doing this. We're seeing central banks around the whole world lifting interest rates at the fastest pace they've done in decades. So this is going to have huge consequences for the markets. But what happens is the interest rate doesn't go up and then the market crashes the next day. This takes months, if not at least 12 months or a year, for it to flow into the markets, for it to flow into the credit markets, before people's savings starts getting drained, before people's credit lines are start getting maxed out. But we are going to start to see uh, these lag effects, I think, next year. And also, we aren't even at peak interest rates yet. The Federal Reserve says they're going to go to a rate of at least 5%, so we still have a lot more pain coming. And then we won't feel the full pain from that until 6 to 12 months later. Recession is foretold as central banks race to tame inflation. It's the opposite of past recessions the team wrote in the 2023 Global Outlook, which says that the global economy has already exited a four-decade period of stable growth in inflation and has now entered a period of heightened instability. So that's exactly right, everyone. What we've seen over the past 40 years is we've seen uh, the middle class, they've had a pretty good standard of living uh, compared to previous times. But what we've seen also over that past 40 years is that standard of living has been getting worse and worse and worse. And now, if you're middle class or if you make, you know, seventy to $80,000 or even six figures, you're not living a high flash lifestyle like what you would have uh, lived on that income. Now people are on seventy, eighty thousand dollars. They're struggling just to cover the basic essentials like rent, food, and utilities. And many people think this inflation is going to go away next year. Well, no. When we look back at history, like the nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties, it takes at least about five years for inflation to get back down to two percent after reaching double digit growth. And when things get bad, central bankers won't ride to the rescue when growth slows in the new regime. Contrary to what investors have come to expect, equity valuations don't yet reflect the damage ahead. Ah, so even BlackRock is admitting now and investors are still delusional that when things get bad this time, the central banks will be there to save the day. No, they can't, people, and the stock market has not priced this in. While we've seen some bear market rallies in the past, well, what I think is going to happen in 2023, reality is going to kick in. And once investors realize that the Fed's not going to be there to save the day, and once we go from high inflation or inflation being the risk to the market, I think the next risk to the market is investors going to realize that we're going to be in a severe, severe recession and also earnings for companies are absolutely going to crash like, like what's already been happening. What worked in the past won't work now, said the strategist. The old playbook of simply buying the dip doesn't apply in this regime of sharper trade-offs and greater macro volatility. 
That's right, everyone. You saw what happened uh, in 2020 and 2021. Everyone was like, buy the dip. You saw all the investors saying, you know, diamond hands. Uh, you know, just don't worry. Just come in and buy the dip. It'll go back up next week. Well, now the market hasn't recovered uh, for over a year. So you saw all these people that have been buying the dip while they've been getting wrecked and the dip has turned into a rip and the worst is not over yet. But again, a lot of investors fears are inflation getting out of control. So what is the cure for that? Well, BlackRock says a deep, painful recession. So look at this, taming inflation would take a deep recession and they're saying it would take at least a 2% fall in GDP. So another mistake I see coming for investors is when inflation does start to fall when we enter in a recession, they're going to have false hope that all of a sudden this means stocks are going to go to the moon and the Federal Reserve is going to turn the money printer on again and drop interest rates to zero. But what people won't be aware of is there's going to be a new risk in town, like I said, and the risk theme is going to go from inflation to recession. And if the recession gets really bad, it doesn't even mean uh, if the Fed pivots that the market crash will be over. I've shown you charts before that when the Federal Reserve pivots, sometimes the market doesn't bottom for six to 12 months later. So compounding the issue is aging workforces around the world, which is one key reason that supply of US labor is struggling to keep up with demand. So look at this chart here, everyone. A workforce not recovered. Contribution of aging to US labor force participation drop from uh, 2008 to 2022. And we can see here how fast this drop has been going down. So that's another big risk uh, for the markets, everyone, is demographic changes. The West, especially in the US, the population is starting to age. We see how this worked out in Japan with their uh, aging population. They've had very weak uh, economic growth. And what this is going to mean is there's going to be less workers in the workforce because a lot of baby boomers are retiring. Uh, millennials aren't having uh, as much kids. And this is going to keep wages higher for longer because there's not going to be enough supply of workers. And again, on top of this, an aging population is less and less spending on consumer goods because when people in retirement, uh, they tend not to spend as much. And that means we're going to see these company earnings continue to fall. The initial sharp drop was driven by COVID uh, shutdowns. Many who lost their jobs didn't look for another one right away, given healthcare worries or caregiving responsibilities. Some of that drop in the workforce has now unwound. But the yellow line shows that the part not made up is almost entirely down to aging. The increasing share of the population that is of retirement age rather than pandemic are specific effects. That's why we don't expect an improvement in the participation rate from here. And so no material easing of work shortages that is contributing to higher inflation. And BlackRock is warning of a new world order. According to BlackRock, we've entered into a new world order in which we see geopolitical uh, cooperation and globalization evolving into a fragmented world with competing blocks. The team further writes that the geopolitical fragmentation is likely to foster a permanent risk premium across asset classes rather than only having a fleeting effect on the markets as in the past. And they're right about that one as well, people. Geopolitical issues right now are getting worse and worse and worse. And this is going to have big impacts on the markets. We're seeing what's happened uh, with the war with Russia and Ukraine, how that's made inflation worse. Yes, while that hasn't contributed to all the inflation, that definitely has uh, made it worse. And we've seen what's happening uh, in China with them continuing to go on lockdown after lockdown. This is breaking the global supply chain. And this is leading to companies like Apple having to withdraw out of China or diversify the supply chains because they're not a reliable manufacturer anymore. And we saw what happened with uh, uh, China manufacturing orders. Uh, they plummeted 40%. So while labor shortages are going to lead to higher wages and that will lead to inflation being higher for longer, also geopolitical risk and people or companies uh, taking their supply chains away from China to more expensive alternatives is going to keep inflation higher for longer as well. So okay, now the juicy information you're wanting to know. How bad could this market crash get? Let's have a deeper look, everyone. The warning from BlackRock echoes those from Morgan Stanley, Bank of America and Deutsche Bank which have produced dire predictions ranging from a 20% stock plunge in 2023 to Goldman's uh, David Solomon seeing a 65% chance of recession. While, while, while these predictions come in line with mine, I've been warning that I think the market is going to drop about 34% from its peak to its trough. We're down around 16-17% from the peak now. 
So we get another 20% drop that will be about a 30 to 35% decline from the peak, which has been the average bear market decline. They're also saying there's a 65% chance of recession, while well, I think it's more like 99% because we're already in one, but we won't actually get the data that we're in one until six months later. So BlackRock team says here, we don't think equities are fully priced for recession. Corporate earnings expectations have yet to fully reflect even a modest recession, and this keeps us tactically underweight to develop market equities. So everyone, I know what you're thinking, well, okay, what does this mean in simple terms? Well, what this means is everyone, while we haven't seen the worst of it yet, the worst is yet to come. I think the markets are going to crash lower, and like what BlackRock is warning here, when they do start to decline lower and investors realize that the central bankers aren't going to be there to save the day, we're going to enter into a long, painful recession. We have an aging population, which is affecting the workforce, and we also have huge geopolitical risks that's going to make inflation worse as well. And as interest rates keep going up in 2023, as people's savings accounts get drained, as people max out those credit cards, we're going to see companies' earnings crash, and we're seeing what's happened with some of these earnings reports this year when companies have uh, reported bad earnings some of their stocks have crashed 20 or 30 percent just in one day so people i know i sound like a broken clock but remember the clock is not broken it's being tampered with by the government and by the central banks the pain will come next year and the opportunities will come next year so you're definitely going to want to build some cash on the sidelines to buy the real dip that's coming but everyone what do you think all about this let me know down below now, for my loyal viewers and subscribers who are watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.